Today we're going to cover repairing fascia and soffit. Right here we have some rot in the corner and we have some bad fascia board. We've already replaced the fascia board on the other side of the house. I'm going to show you how to replace this fascia board. Once we do this, we're going to sand it down, get everything prepped, and we're going to paint this house. Let's get started. This fascia here, we're going to pull this off. You can see it's rotted pretty bad. So I'm going to show you how to pull this off and get a good seam on the other end. This is a perfect example of what not to do when repairing or, or putting up fascia. Never use giant common nails on here. You don't need to put 16 penny common nails on here that are going to split this redwood. This is redwood fascia and it splits real easily. All you need is an 8 or 10 penny finishing nail on there, a galvanized finishing nail, and you can secure this really well without splitting this wood. Right here we have another problem with the seam not being on the rafter. If the seam is not on the rafter, then this can separate, which you can see by all the darkness back here, it already has done that, and that's why we had rot in here. Now that I marked my line, right here, this is where I have a rafter behind it. That's where my seam's gonna be. I marked my line, I pulled this board off, out, away from the, the uh, roof. Once I pull it out, I put a little block of wood back here. That keeps it away from the roof where I can make a nice clean cut. I want to use my square as a guide because I want a really straight cut here. I'm going to cut it right here and when I go up I'm going to be very careful here because this is going to let loose. As you can see I got a nice straight cut. Now I'm going to rip this board down. This is uh, my fascia board, which is actually eight inches, and I only need five and a half inches for this. So I'm going to go ahead and set my guide up at five and a half inches on my Tracer XL tape, and I'm going to mark my line. Once I have this line marked, I'm going to come back and rip this, and I'll have the perfect size for that. I'm going to go ahead and make rip this piece. But the way I do it is I'll grab this plate and use my finger as a guide. My finger's going to keep it in place and I'll follow this line. So I pinch it just like this, I line it up, and now I'm just going to rip my board. Now I have my saw set at a 45 degree miter and I have a square here that I'm going to use as a guide. I'm going to go ahead and make this cut. Keep in mind that when you're cutting a, a sharp angle, like a 45 degree angle, this guard is going to tend to want to snag on the wood and not roll over. So I'll just take it and pull it up and then I'll use my finger to hold it. Now, once I do that, I have my other finger here and then I'll pull the trigger with this finger. I'll set it in place and I'll make my cut. Okay, this takes two people. My father's holding the board up on the other end, lining up the seam. I'm going to mark the back side of this so we can get our miter cut. I marked the back side when it was on the house. I want to transfer this to the front. I bring my guide up. I line this up. I like to hold the square against the wood this way so I can really clamp it down tight. If it's this way, it's a little more awkward for me. Now we have a perfect miter cut. Okay, with Dad's help, I finished this up. You can see this is a nice seam. Right here we have a little split from the, uh, the giant nails they used previously, um, but that is such a small thing to fix that I'm not concerned about it. I put a little bondo on here and I'll fill these giant holes up that they had on here previously, and I'm going to clean this up real good. Once I do this with bondo and clean it up, we paint it, you'll never even know it was there. If I'm using hand nails, I'll use eight or ten penny finishing nails with a small head, and make sure you use galvanized nails. I use the nail gun on here because it makes the job so much easier and I'll use two inch galvanized nails when I'm doing this, uh, 16 gauge nails. 
Um, you can use 18 gauge, but just make sure you use two inch nails. You want to bite into there real good, and I made sure it's good and solid. Okay, this is done. This is why you never want to use bright nails on an exterior of a house. Bright nails will rust, and what they do is once they start rusting, they lose their grip. They get a little bit thinner, and you can just pull them right out. They don't even hold well. All of these nails that are in here, I just pulled them right out. Now I have large holes. The holes are easy to fix. All I do is sand this down, putty those up, and I'll be fine. Um, most of this fascia I changed on this house. A couple of pieces are left. We didn't want to have to change everything. Um, because this is really not in bad shape. The only bad thing about it is these stupid nails. So these are going to be fixed. We're going to have this house looking good. The best wood filler is body filler. I use Bondo for these corners. This corner is not rotted. It just swelled up some. You know how those corners will do when water gets in between there. If you fill this up with Bondo and sand it, you'll get a really nice tight corner that looks great and it's also watertight. Once you prime and paint this, this will last years. Okay, I'm going to mix this up, fill this in, and now we're going to have perfect corners. When you're doing Bondo during the summer, you're not going to have much time once you mix this. I have my hardener here and my Bondo here. I'm going to mix this up and I only have a couple of minutes. When it's cooler weather, you'll have a little bit more time. You may mix up a little bit more hardener, but don't put too much hardener in there during the summer unless you, you know you're going to go quick. Okay, I'll mix this up. And it only takes a couple of seconds to mix it. Once I mix this up, I just fill in that crack, come back over and sand it. And I'll have a perfect seam or corner. I put tape down here at the bottom so when it fills down to there, it's, it's not going to ooze out and drip down because it's a little gap right there. So, fill this in. Make sure you sand your wood real well before that, before you apply this. You, you don't want to apply this over the paint. You want to have it over fresh wood. That way it really bonds well. As you can see, I have a perfect seam right here now. All I have to do is prime and paint it. You don't have to worry about it splitting like caulk would and then water getting behind there again. This is going to stay tight for years and it's going to keep the water out. You see this line right here? I left this on purpose. I'm getting ready to paint it, but I left it there so you can see where the seam is on this piece of fascia. This is a piece of fascia that we cut out earlier and I just used a circular saw to do it. Um, you can see right here, it's perfectly smooth. A couple of key things that I do is I always put glue on a seam before I put it together. That way this won't separate. I use a good exterior wood glue. I also take any little imperfections and I'll just fill it in with a little bit of Bondo, sand it, and now I have a perfectly smooth face. Well, I'm finished for today. The only thing I have left is to clean my brushes. I always make sure I clean my bristles out real good, and I use a wire brush to do that. Till next time, I'll see you later. <music>